This is Bill with the Pennsylvania Center for Digital Forensics, and today we're going to be using FTK 3.4 to create a new case and import some evidence. Now in this case, we already have an image created of a flash drive that we're going to use as our evidence. And the first step here is to open up FTK. Now when you first open FTK, it's going to ask you for a login, which will be supplied by either your employer or by your professor. Once you do that, you'll get this screen here. Off to the left will be all the cases that you currently have in FTK, and off to the right will be some information about whichever case is selected. Now to create a new case, we're going to go up to the top and choose Case, and then New. Now you're going to fill in some information about it. In this case, I'll call this SanDisk Flash Drive Sample Case. Description, SanDisk Sample. Now it's going to ask what directory you want to save it in. I'm just going to leave it right in that directory there. Now you can go ahead and hit OK here and go ahead with your creation of the case. But it's much easier to go to the Detailed Options button here. Now this will let you select what options you want in your evidence processing step. If you select it now, it'll apply to all the evidence you add in later on. If you wait, you have to kind of individually go through and do this for each piece of evidence and it's just it's more of a pain than it's worth. So you're better off doing it now. Now most of the defaults that are already selected are okay. The only thing you might want to do is add in a few other things. First thing I want to do is during the generation of the file hashes, I want it to flag duplicate files. Because if there's more than one copy of a file, maybe that should stand out to me for one reason or another. So I want to do that. The KFF will list and filter known files, so Windows files, things like that, stuff that it knows are good files. That way it's easier to ignore them. We want to add an entropy test here, which will basically allow FTK to scan the density of the data within a file, and that kind of aids it in deciding the best way to index that file. Now if you wanted to, you could also have FTK carve any files that it finds in unallocated space, or anywhere else on the drive for that matter while it's processing the evidence. That could save you some serious time later on if there's a lot of files that have been deleted or lost. In this case, there's nothing deleted. I already know that, so I'm just going to leave that alone to save some time. And the last thing you can do, or that I'm going to do, is generate a file listing which will hold all the names of the files in this particular piece of evidence. I'm going to go ahead and create an HTML file listing, because you can do HTML, or a comma-separated value list, which you could then open in Excel. Now down the side here, there's some other different evidence processing areas here that you can go through. In most cases, the defaults are alright, so we're going to leave them alone, and we're going to go ahead and hit OK. From there, we're just going to hit OK here, and now FTK is going to create the case, and then it'll reopen. Once it reopens, you'll pop up this Manage Evidence window here, and this is where you're going to import your images and any other evidence you might have. So we're going to click Add. Now in this case, I only have one image, so I'm going to go with Acquired Images here. But if, say, you had multiple images as a part of your case, you might want to do all images in a directory. That way it handles them all right at once. Or if you don't have an image, say you just have the files that you want as your evidence, you could do contents of a directory or individual files. Or if you wanted to just view a physical drive that's attached to the computer, you could do physical drive or you could do logical drive, which will show you what you would see if you were looking at it in Windows Explorer. Physical, you'd see the unallocated space as well, which can be nice. In my case, I want to do acquired image and say OK. And now I have this SanDisk flash drive image here I'm going to choose. From there, you want to make sure you choose the correct time zone, depending on where you're at. In this case, Eastern Time is where I'm at. Now if you say didn't set those options earlier, you can choose refinement options here and go in and configure these options. But in our case we already set them so we're alright. Up here you can put in some information about this piece of evidence. In my case I'll say SanDisk image, image of suspect flash drive. And then you can also create evidence groups which is useful for managing multiple pieces of evidence. In this case, I only have one piece, so I'm going to kind of leave that alone. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now at this stage, FTK is going to process your evidence, so it's not only going to import the image, but it's going to filter through that entire image, and it's going to index all of the text that it finds, 
That way, if say you want to search for a keyword, it'll search not only file names, but the inside of files and things along those lines. It'll carve any files if you chose data carving. Basically, this is the step where FTK is going to do all the legwork and kind of build up your evidence for you so that it's ready for you to view. This can indeed take a long time, depending on how large your image is or if you have multiple images. In this case, I have one really small image, so it's going pretty quick. But it can take hours if you have a large enough image, so you might want to be prepared to wait. Okay, so once it finishes up, you'll see job finished off to the right, and you'll see process status finished in the middle, as well as finished over here. The one on the left is useful if you have multiple pieces of evidence because they're probably not all going to finish at the same time, so you'll be able to see which ones are finished and which ones aren't. And if one of your pieces finishes, you can always close the window and go ahead out into FTK and start toying around with that piece of evidence while the other ones process. In our case, we're done, so we're just going to say close. And now up here on the left, you'll see the SanDisk image here, and we can use this little plus mark to drop down until we can see the files that are inside of that image. And you can see here that I have the root of the drive as well as the unallocated space. When I select root, you'll see the files and directories that are on here off to the bottom. If I drop down this plus sign, I can see the Excel file that's on there as well as the two other directories that are on there. The upper right has the hex, or you can actually change this to different tabs here, the hex of the Excel file, the text of the Excel file, which is not very useful filtered which will show you some different information in this case it will show you some of the stuff that's in the text or I mean in the Excel file or natural in this case it's actually show you the Excel file now this also applies to any any file so if I was to do a JPEG now you'll see the JPEG in natural filtered just kind of gibberish text nothing and then there's the hex of the JPEG so that's how you import evidence into FTK as well as creating a new case and again, this is Bill with Pennsylvania Center for Digital Forensics. Thank you.